Good morning. My name is Valentine uh, Venus, working at the spin-off company of the University of Twente that was founded in 2014. Um, and we have been engaging with citizens in both um, Africa as well as Europe in sort of uh, the idea of caring better of the world that we have uh, and the nature resources that it has to offer. Um, I have um, made a short summary of uh, the projects that we were engaged in or are still involved in. Um, so where is our new unique um, <clears throat> offer? Here you see the um, triangle between space sensors, uh, motion and camera sensors and human sensors, if we are allowed to even call humans uh, in this way. Um, and that's, I think, where we sort of try to find um, competitive uh, advantages there, whereby each other's weaknesses or strengths between these different sensory capabilities can be enhanced or overcome. Um, so a few examples of those follow in a minute. So I think much of this has been said before, so I'll just go over it quickly. Um, but here are some of the questions that we are also hoping to engage citizens with in the ILIAD project, where we are also a partner in the citizen science work package. The questions that are here sort of articulated, what would uh, basically the follow up of what you said, not what the ocean is today, but what we would like it to be. And then uh, zoom into, well, some of the questions we've been hearing our stakeholders within the ILIAD project asking themselves, looking at how dense the North Sea, for example, is being um, particularly used already, but also planned. Uh, the fishermen are wondering how are fish populations changing in this, in this area, and where can I still hope to catch fish sustainably? Now that uh, with the Green Deal, I'm being asked to report the sustainability not only of the spe species, but also the way of how I catch them. So, of course, these perspectives, we hope, will encourage citizens to change their behavior. Um, we did a project in Indonesia uh, mapping uh, the total amount of mismanaged uh, waste that ends up from tertiary, secondary and primary rivers in watersheds all the way into the ocean equivalent of some 300 soccer fields of uh, garbage is um, dumped in the ocean per day um, in cities with uh, more than 20 million uh, citizens. This mismanaged waste is something that we try to model as part of a regional workshop on uh, understanding regional marine debris flows uh, to inspire local action. and. There again, we use satellite data to map the population density along these tertiary, secondary, and primary river streams, particularly nightlight data sets that we use to disaggregate census data of how many people were living in a particular province or district, all the way down to a one by one kilometer estimate of the amount of people living there and the mismanaged wage that we could model based on that projection. Um, and then we were sort of looking second, second step at the amounts of debris that were then ending up in the ocean through river mouths being distributed through, of course, um, the monsoon um, atmospheric, but ocean, also ocean uh, currents. And looking at the configuration of the um, more than 3,000 islands the, in the archipelago of Indonesia, how could we team up different islands to have a factory recycling this plastic and women organizations collecting the debris from the beaches, uh, working 365, 24, 7. Um, and of course, you also, also got the, the organic litter, which could then also be in the process used as uh, increasing soil organic content to help in the very uh, coarse sand agriculture that is typically very un productive in these islands. So that was a workshop that we delivered um, and a training course focusing on those elements just to give you an idea of 
what we've done in the plastic uh, marine litter domain. Um, now, of course, in the context of Iliad, unfortunately, um, although perhaps some would argue, fortunately, fisher uh, men and operators are part of the project. They are stakeholders, but they have a vested financial incentive not to release too much of their business operations for them to inform their competition or perhaps to expose things that they would rather keep under the hood. So um, we've been talking to these fishermen and thinking through how could we then perhaps through anonymization of your catch data or through maybe advocacy of your data for advocacy purposes rather than for true business planning purposes, still uh, engage other stakeholders such as policy makers. And that's now also being explored in the Iliad project. How do you go about engaging, uh, say, private enterprise uh, citizen science observations while still making the best of the value that this data has to offer. So fit for purpose are typical topics that we need to address with them as they uh, think through whether or not they'd like to be and continue to be part of these science operations. So the sense of ownership and agency for, for, for triggering change is also something we looked at um, and keep, keep looking at in the Iliad project and the others. Let me just go and do next. Did I click on something? All right. So I, I will skip the, the more generic topics that have been discussed already. So what we aim for is deductively sound inspirational examples in citizen science in the maritime and marine space for, for also author. Um, as we develop um, uh, packages for academic and higher education institutions to be part and join the bandwagon. Uh, we've also looked at mining social media and that's, well, that's something that uh, Georgios, uh, my follower presenter, will touch upon in more detail, but also exposing these uh, social media mine summaries using what is called linked open data compatible standards. Here's an example, Jason LD or GeoJSON LD. And of course, easy, easily comprehensible, um, almost in a chat GPT type of uh, conversation. What would, um, uh, what would be the situation after all these wind parks have been installed? Is there any fishing grounds left would be an obvious question that uh, one of the trawler owners may ask in the Iliad project, for example. We hope to produce a repository of assets to enable citizen science and engagement. And of course, illustrating how these assets were used in uh, practical examples. And I will touch upon some of these assets in a minute. And of course, some of the pilots within, uh, within authors and other projects uh, to further demonstrate uh, fit for purpose, for example, as we discussed earlier. Iliad also tries and aims to um, create a AKA marketplace of maritime citizen science apps. Um, and of course, also the data repositories that might be uh, given the interoperability standards that we work on together with organizations like OGC. Uh, enable others to make use of the same data. So self-explanatory uh, enriched metadata that is also machine readable. Uh, so in ILET, we're trying to at least develop five pilots demonstrating the different forms of citizen science and engagement uh, and develop a methodology uh, that would, would be, of course, of interest, uh, perhaps also to authors, particularly in the engagement with digital twins of the environment, where questions such as the ones that we looked at earlier are asked, what if this happens, then what, what does that mean for me? 
So I will skip over again this slide, which has been addressed by my previous presenter. Uh, but on the right panel, you see a couple of um, of these pilots uh, as we are targeting in Iliad. So we have got the fishery example that I just touched upon. We've got the harbor safety, um, where there is a web application developed where observations of uh, risky conditions are also introduced, such as micro plastics as well. We've got the uh, also the invasive species uh, ballast water uh, touching on the same, but then looking at invasive species through citizen science. Jellyfish uh, will be touched upon in more length by the University of Haifa, also a partner in Otters. Ship routing and fisheries in the Met, oil spills, and then finally the media, social media data scraping that our, my follow presenter will touch upon in more length. So here's an example of how we plan to enable and have been doing already uh, to co-create citizens uh, in scientific projects and beyond using semantics. So here you see an example of uh, a typical uh, data model that we think is fit for purpose for say informal markets that are typically used in say developing bottom of pyramid countries where markets don't have a fixed place. Markets may pop up and disappear. Um, depending on, say, roadside uh, proximity, uh, changing trade routes, L ladies will come, traders will come with baskets to the roadside and actually sometimes buy more than 50% of tomatoes being, say, produced in Burkina Faso, transported initially for, intended for markets all the way in Accra, which is, by according to Google, only an 11-hour uh, journey, but in practice may take up, up to 32 or sometimes 40 hours because of roadblocks and bad road conditions and other physical challenges. So here is the example of fish mar market prices, where we sort of come up with a vocabulary of, for example, the market location being a dynamic rather than a constant, um, and also uh, allowing IT companies based on an agreed vocabulary between initially just the stakeholders, an IT company to build an Android application using the same vocabulary, uh, making it not only easier, but potentially also more cheaper in a competitive uh, bidding process. We've also looked at sort of the, the balance between remunerated data collections and, and citizen science uh, forms. And you obviously see most of our market price observatory initiatives fail and not having a sustained source of income. So there is interesting information about market prices collected for a while, but then somehow funds run out and it stops. And of course, that's also something that we hope to test uh, if there's an organically growing uh, uh, critical mass of users, maybe the remunerated data collections uh, might um, be decreased depending on uh, how that uh, dynamic flows. Here you see an example of uh, a full uh, swipe-based uh, user interface experience optimized for semi-literate users. Uh, even the currency uh, step number five is fully swipe-based. So if someone sells or buys a bucket of fish, sardines for example, just swiping the local currency with of course, initially the currency notes and the coins being photographed rather than entered. Uh, up and down swiping is just changing the price of the commodity that is being bought to allow for sort of a, a non-text-based interaction. We asked uh, in different workshops uh, them also to be actively part of this UIX design. Even uh, hand-drawn graphics are used as an input to the design process of an app. Here you see an example of the same called Cheetah, where we have over 70,000 observations of um, bribery along these value chains and post-harvest losses um, that are incurred because of the much longer duration transports. Um, sometimes trucks park at border crossing um, waiting for several hours in the burning African sun. And so 
Also rough roads and, uh, and the frequent delays of illegal checkpoints is now being shared between truck drivers. And an example of the efficiency is perhaps that illegal checkpoint operators just wave a truck to pass the moment they detect the co-pilot holding a phone in his hand because they know the, they are using the Cheetah app and don't want to be exposed because we have seen that journalists are very interested in these uh, data sets to write stories about bribery in their countries. Um, we pull in uh, some, some tech uh, solutions to some of the tech challenges. Um, such as how do you register all these observation, observations on a common coordinate axis when we all know that GPS accuracy is still subject to improvement. Uh, and some, some examples here where you see a, a red dotted GPS track deviating sometimes more than 20 meters from the road that was actually used. So how do you alert someone of an upcoming um, police checkpoint or pothole that uh, is not registered on exactly on the same road they are using. Um, the same was used in Uganda, where women uh, use make use of public ped pedestrian informal roads up and down from the slum area to, say, the hospital in town, um, where c city lights are broken or completely absent. And again, we wanted to facilitate uh, them in crowdsourcing absence of, uh, say, these basic anemones. Um, rough patches uh, we found, and, and road and uh, potholes and other bad road conditions, we found that post-harvest losses were significantly larger when roads were bad, also because of the physical vibrations that are exposed to the cargo. And here we look at an AI, edge AI algorithm running on the smartphone, um, and we've developed this already four years ago. Uh, before Google even ever thought about uh, Edge AI or implemented any form of API. And this uh, AI, uh, Edge AI algorithm is trained in, say, a, a journey of three hours when the user first installs the app on, in their dashboard of their cockpit. The attitude of the phone is normalized for the gravitational force, uh, and then vibrations are then related to the classifications that you see here. So here the truck hits a rough patch and the, an audible um, prompt is given. Was this uh, a speed bump? And then the user says, no, this was a rough patch. And in this way, you can retrain the algorithm in, in a journey of three to four hours, adding even uh, road pavement uh, type uh, categories that are not prevalent for other areas, but very unique to yours, for example, here in Germany, but also in, uh, in uh, Burkina Faso, there are roads, uh, roads paved with uh, large uh, segments of uh, concrete. So you have this repetitive monomotous dung, 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 dung vibration. Even that can be added uh, as a unique class of road pavement quality and then hidden uh, once it knows how to detect it correctly and it will not prompt the user for the same type anymore, not to overload or ask questions unnecessarily at the wrong time. We also look at uh, quantifying uh, through citizen science engagement the amount of losses in the vegetables that are incurred. I have a video of uh, users being interviewed on the same, so if you're interested, feel free to... Um, Maybe, can you help me, please? If you're interested uh, to know more about this, I have some video materials of training sessions, also with the journalist that ended up using this data uh, in their storytelling and use the infographics of the observations that uh, citizens made. Thank you. Cheers. So, Post-harvest losses are related also, again, to add a triangular relationship between these sensory types to Earth observations. So we use the uh, diurnal uh, five-minute interval geostationary satellite data to model temperature, humidity, and light conditions in the cargo. And then, of course, duration and road quality was discussed earlier. This is all equated to a, a post-harvest loss equation with which users are made aware of uh, how costly some of their logistic operations end up being. But it also informs 
neighboring country uh, traders about, say, the, in, the unforeseen expenditure the moment they venture into a new trade corridor, which is typically reserved for uh, these kind of value chain mapping exercises, typically reserved for larger organizations like Car Carrefour or other retail channels to do a proper mapping of informal uh, and uh, hidden barriers to trade. But now we make this data publicly accessible also for small traders. Here you see the same in Indonesia, where the governor of West uh, Eastern Java is uh, partaking in the citizen science initiative and drawing circles around potholes on the street, where the app is sort of uh, in this way made popular um, by his uh, advocacy for the same efforts. Um, and sometimes we see that, uh, well, in this case, in West Africa, we were trying to augment uh, an effort using geo information to map roadside trade uh, shops and uh, stalls. Women sell a lot of their produce along the roadside, um, where we found that women were a bit uh, wary about sharing their prices with their competitors. And perhaps sometimes we are overlooking these uh, border um, barriers to citizen science engagement. So this is still level uh, uh, one. The output that I'm here showing is the um, signal strength of um, a mobile network, because of obviously uh, intermittent internet connections um, need to be uh, addressed. But these are these are bycatches of say coverage of mobile network strength that we are also selling as data products to, to uh, major telco operators. The last example is the Holland Busathon that we uh, did last year and in the first iteration and with funding of the Dutch Space Office, uh, again, hope to repeat this year. Uh, here we brought together 20 international students from the Erasmus Mundus uh, uh, funded uh, joint course between Leuven, Lund, uh, Tartu and ITC, uh, where uh, some 20 students of the geoinformation management program got together and looked, for example, at the fatality of uh, what we claim to be a very healthy Kurort uh, beach location in uh, the province of South Holland, Noordwijk, where we see an increase in fatal surf zone fat fatalities. Um, and the question was, can we better detect one of the most uh, dangerous ones uh, semi-automatically and can citizen science be part of this uh, effort? And so, because the amount of uh, volunteers working for the, the Beach Watch Reddingsbrigade, as we call it in the Netherlands, is limited and they have huge amounts of kilometers of beach to cover, uh, observing um, tourists uh, potentially being exposed to, to these fatal ocean conditions, such as the riptide currents. Um, in the end, we this was one of the winners of the challenge, and they came up with uh, a way of training the CCTV cameras that are already positioned along the beaches, together with earth observation imagery and drone imagery to help the beach watch uh, volunteers with potential hotspots for risky areas so that they could focus their efforts uh, in a targeted, more targeted fashion. This was an overview of some of the citizen science, uh, largely level one um, activities we're engaged in or have been engaged with. And uh, I'm open for any questions you may have.